What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and I'm here with several of the matches that I was not able to live record from the uh, Battle of Generations. So, or Battle of Legends, whatever it was called. All those wonderful battles from a couple of weekends ago where you could use basically anything with the restriction on just title legendaries for the most part. Um, you could just use title legendaries, but you could only use two of them. Now I had a lot of really fun time battling with Mega Rayquaza and also with Evil Tall. Their strategy was really, really nice. Um, in this battle right here, Xerneas was the very omnipresent threat and a lot of my opponents had just been using Geomancy right off the bat. Whereas if I knew my opponent was going to bring it, then I could just lead off with uh, my Aegislash and my Mega Rayquaza and pop it right in the face with a dual target attack there before it gets a chance to do anything. Uh, even with plus two special defense, I wasn't able to take a hit from Flash Cannon. So that's pretty nice. Uh, my mistake in this battle was leaving the um, live part alone far too long. Um, it's providing some pretty interesting team support and it even locks my Aegislash into this offensive mode so that I can't even use Wide Guard or King Shield. Um, he's really going to take advantage of that on this turn as I'm forced to switch out basically. Uh, I am able to hit uh, pretty hard with my Eveltal because of the dark the dark aura boosted attacks. But that doesn't help me out at all when he uses fake tears and obliterates my evil tall with um, basically a minus one special defense uh, order impulse there. Fortunately though, I am able to get up Trick Room with my Aromatisse. Here we're just gonna King Shield to see what he wants to do, and I'm going to take this opportunity to get rid of that uh, Light Part. It's unlikely that it has Protect, but it, I thought it would have a Focus Ash. Fortunately, it didn't. Um, Origin Pulse is going to be able to take down my Aromatisse, but that is going to be okay because now we're working with two on two. Unfortunately for me, his last Pokemon is a Marowak, which not only works nicely with Ke uh, Kyogre because it will draw away the electric type attacks, but also I can't protect both of my Pokemon in one turn. Either I block the Origin Pulse, I get hit by the Momorang, or I just use King, try to use King Shield again and try to dodge them both. I decided to try to give my Rayquaza some uh, vitality and living there, but my Trick Room is going to work against me as he's going to outspeed me in the next turn and take me down. But that was still interesting. That was the only time I faced a Marowak during the entire competition. Um, a Marowak is still very viable in doubles, especially with a Thick Club item doubling his attack stat. And with Lightning Rod to draw away those electric type moves, it makes his partner do a little bit less work for a lot more gain. Now this was a really interesting match. Once again, Rayquaza, Eveltal is my starting duo. I really like uh, running special moves and physical moves on Eveltal. Just because when that Intimidate does happen, I can just leave it in and work around it. Now, I wasn't very concerned with rock moves here, so I decided to just stay in and boost with my Rayquaza. Uh, and he is just going to go for a rock slide, but with Delta Stream, that's not doing very much at all. Now, with that in mind, he kind of sees that he switches out after he sees me Swords Dance to bring in his own Rayquaza. But since he brought it in like that, I'm kind of able to just... Uh, hit it before or he does anything after Mega Evolving. I did foul play in an attempt to hit the Landorus before it switched out. Foul play of course would not be affected by the Intimidate because I'm using the Landorus' attack stat plus 30% from my uh, Dark Aura. Um, now the Terrakion is just going to take a ton of damage from this Oblivion Wing and that is I think I only have eight special attack EVs invested for Oblivion Wing and this is acquired nature evil tall but uh that just basically gets back almost all the HP that I was missing from Rock Slides to start with. Um, I am going to be able to take out Terrakion with an Earthquake. I wasn't worried about Landorus at this point because I knew I could finish it off with a Foul Play. And um, even the Stone Edge is not enough to break through Evil Tall's defenses with the Delta Stream up. So I'm really happy I went for such a bulky Evil Tall in this matchup. Um, his last Pokemon is Heatran, and unfortunately that's not going to be able to do anything with uh, me running around with Earthquake. Now in this match, we see Groudon and uh, Xerneas as the starting Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field. Once again, I saw Xerneas, so I decided to go ahead and bring my Aegislash. Uh, unfortunately for me, I I just completely underestimate my opponent as he just goes directly for Moonblast. 
I will get the Mega of all, but that will be the only time we see my Mega Rayquaza during this match, because he just blasted it away immediately. I, I probably face Xerneas at least 12 or 15 times, and most of the time they would try to use Geomancy, so that was one of the few times that didn't quite work out for me. Um, I do get my weakness policy here. Uh, it, it helps in the sense that now I can blow away his Xerneas in return, but at the same time, I still have to deal with Groudon. Uh, and Primal Groudon, it was uh, the number one used Pokemon in the entire competition, uh, even more so than Rayquaza, which I found very interesting. I guess a lot of people just didn't have good Rayquaza that they felt comfortable with, whereas you can go back and, ca go back and catch Groudon later on. Uh, Fake Out is very, very annoying here because it stops me from getting at least some chip damage on his Groudon, uh, or even the Kangaskhan here. Uh, I went for a wide guard there expecting another rock slide, but Evil Tall is not able to live another uh, hit from the Kangaskhan after taking the rock slide and the fake out damage. So that forces me to bring in my Heatran, and with Groudon in the field, unfortunately that's just not going to really go anywhere. Uh, I am impressed though with the amount of damage that Heatran does do with its flash cannon against the Kangaskhan. That's a very easy 2 at KO. And he finishes off my Aegis Slash quite simply there. And I just don't have anything to hit his Groudon with. Um, this particular Heatran has Protect, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power Ice, and uh, Fire Blast. So that battle was kind of a wash, but I did want to show kind of that one time that my opponent did not do what I wanted um, them to do with their Xerneas. Which if he had just tried to Geomancy, that battle would have went a lot better. Now in this battle, my opponent used some interesting shenanigans. Uh, we see some support from Meowstic. And of course, Talonflame is there for those wonderful Priority Brave Birds. I did forget to put uh, Extreme Speed on this Rayquaza, but I didn't end up needing it for the most part. I guess it would have helped out here a little bit because I could have Extreme Speeded the Talonflame, but he actually just ends up putting up his own Tailwind and then going for a Brave Bird on the next turn. Uh, that actually did a pretty good amount of damage against my Rayquaza. Uh, I, hadn't, I didn't have the Priority move, so him going for Quick Guard wasn't going to help him out very much at all. And based on the Pokemon that he had on the rest of his team, which are all pretty speedy for the most part, I decided to just go ahead and put up the Trick Room there. Uh, now with Thunderous in, I expected to get paralyzed. With Delta Stream, of course, I, I resist electric type attacks, so I'm not very worried about those. And I could also Heal Pulse up my own Rayquaza since I don't have any other way to recover my HP. Uh, I did predict him to switch out right there, but unfortunately for me, I was just tired and instead of hitting Heal, heal Pulse, I hit Moonblast and then I Moonblasted my own Mega Rayquaza. Instead of healing it and also Dragon Clawing his uh, switching and his own Rayquaza. So that was really, really, really stupid that I did that, but it was pretty funny. I probably laughed about that for a good 30 seconds before getting back in the match. It did wake me up though, uh, and I'm able to bring in Eveltal right here. Now that he has his own Mega Rayquaza, Eveltal does get access to um, not being super effectively affected. Wow, not being weak to the electric type moves. And I'm able to finish off his Rayquaza after he, of course, hits me with an electric type move. Now we are gonna have a little bit of annoyance here as he's going to paralyze my Pokemon. Um, that's okay for the most part since Evil Tall is running a quiet nature, it's pretty slow. I'm more worried in this circumstance about the chance of paralysis. Uh, I really need to break through paralysis here in order to have a chance of winning this battle. I do see a backup trick room. He does go for quick guard again. Now I'm assuming he's trying to block a possible sucker punch, which I just don't have any reason to go for. Um, number one, with trick room up, I'm faster than his Pokemon, or in other words, I outslow them. And number two, I'm not going to sucker punch two Pokemon that uh, predominantly can use uh, non-attacking moves. So Thunderous can use Thunder Wave or Taunt. And of course, Meowstic has a wide range of supporting type moves. But with Heal Pulse support, with his only real offensive option being Thunderbolt, he's not going to be able to take down Evil Tall, and eventually I'll be able to take down his Thunderous without using Sucker Punch once. So after that, he just ends up forfeiting. So that's kind of the first half of the battles that I didn't do a live narration for from the wonderful league that weekend. But I'll have the next half of that up for you guys soon, and I hope to talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.